This is Malik Hook from the University of Colorado. Welcome to a new series called One Slide in Five Minutes, where we will present no more than one content slide and will always keep it at five minutes or less. The first question to start with is maybe a bit too ambitious. What is glaucoma? The answer is intended to be appropriate for patients, medical students, and residents. Glaucoma is a general or umbrella term that we use to cover a group of diseases that share the common clinical picture of characteristic optic nerve cupping with distinctive patterns of visual field loss. The optic nerve cupping is an expansion of the internal optic nerve head void that occurs secondary to the loss of ganglion cell axons that leave the eye through the opening in the sclera in the back of the eye. And you can see this here. By example, the axons travel into the area of the nerve and do so in a characteristic pattern, curving into the area of the optic nerve. And this creates a neuroretinal rim that you can see here around the optic nerve, as well as the cup, which I'm circling here. We diagnose glaucoma through optic nerve head exam, looking at the size of the cup and width of the neuroretinal rim, as well as other features of the optic nerve. We also utilize optical coherence tomography, or OCT, to objectively measure the thickness of the normal nerve fiber layer, as well as many features of the nerve, including size, neuroretinal rim, and you see an example of OCT here at the bottom, and I'll outline the retinal nerve fiber layer. This is the optic nerve, and you can see the cup of the optic nerve here, and these are vessels. For the residents out there, you can tell that this is the right optic nerve horizontal scan by looking at where the vessels are on the right side for the right nerve, and also the thicker RNFL going towards the macula shows you that the macula is on the left and this is a right eye scan. Visual field testing to look for the distinct visual field defects that are characteristic of glaucoma, including nasal steps, with superior nasal steps more common, arcuate scotomas, and unfortunately in some cases that are advanced paracentral and central scotomas. The pattern of the Humphrey visual field scotoma follows the pattern of the ganglion cell loss, giving glaucoma the characteristic defects that are part of the definition of the disease. And in this case, you see a scotoma inferiorly that is turning into an arc. There is the possibility of a superior nasal step, inferior nasal step, and unfortunately, as I said, in some cases, you can get central and paracentral defects that can affect central vision. It should be noted that the findings between optic nerve head exam, Humphrey visual field, and OCT are frequently asynchronous, and Humphrey visual field deficits may lag findings on the optic nerve head exam and RNFL OCT, in which case we refer to the stage of the disease as pre-perimetric glaucoma, meaning it has not manifested on the more subjective Humphrey visual field perimetry. In the distant past, glaucoma was thought to be a disease of elevated pressure in the eye or intraocular pressure. However, we now know that glaucoma can happen at what was thought to be quote-unquote normal pressure, basically between 10 and 21 millimeters of mercury, and we no longer use IOP as part of our definition of glaucoma. Still, intraocular pressure is an important risk factor for glaucoma and is the only modifiable risk factor that we can do something about. We treat glaucoma with drops that decrease fluid production like beta blockers and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, or increase outflow of fluid from the eye like prostaglandin analogs and rokinase inhibitors. Our goal with treatment is to decrease pressure roughly by 25 to 30 percent from baseline as a simple rule. Lasers can be used to increase outflow like laser trabeculoplasty, including selective laser trabeculoplasty or SLT, or we can decrease inflow using cyclophotocoagulation or the more recently introduced micropulse cyclophotocoagulation. Finally, we can use various surgical approaches to decrease pressure when needed. When measuring IOP, it is important to take diurnal or daytime and nocturnal nighttime fluctuations into account. Pressure is highest in the early morning hours and many patients might have higher pressure outside of normal office hours. There are other factors that contribute to glaucomatous optic neuropathy, for example, age, ethnicity, myopia, genetics, and family history. Research continues to explore the effects of IOP independent factors such as immunologic causes. In summary, glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve that results in loss of ganglion cells and thinning of the optic nerve neuroretinal rim, producing cupping. The nerve damage leads to characteristic patterns of visual field loss, usually sparing the central visual field until advanced disease stages. Treatment is focused on lowering IOP, but many other pressure-independent factors are at play, and we continue to research other ways to preserve vision with potential for both neuroprotection as well as aspirational hopes to reverse disease in the future. Thank you.